you're projecting human design and you're trying to find the perfect job or career for you, then you're in the right place. Hi guys, if you're new around here, my name is Veronica. I'm a coach and human design guide. And on this channel, I talk about human design in a way that is simple to understand and easy to implement so that you can find more ease in who you are, what you do and how you do it. So if that sounds good and you'd like to see more videos that are gonna help you with that, then make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you do enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Today, we're going to be talking about projectors in the workplace. This video is particularly focused towards people who are looking for a new job or a new career, whether you're just getting started in the workplace or whether you've been in a career for a long time and you're looking to reinvent yourself, you're looking to change your trajectory of the career that you've chosen, perhaps because you've become aware that you're a projector and you may be realizing that the job or career that you're in now isn't well suited to you, it's not enjoyable and it's not sustainable. So in this video, we're going to look at how can you use human design to identify your ideal career path or job role that is going to allow your juicy projector energy to shine through and is going to enable you to enjoy the work that you do, find fulfillment in it and achieve the level of success that you desire. So number one, starting with the most basic aspect, your energy type, so in this case you being a projector, can give you insight into the type of role that is ideal for you. As a projector, the value that you bring really is in what you see and not in what you're able to do. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the projector energy type yet and you want to better understand the key characteristics and strengths as well as the challenges that come with having a projector energy, then I do invite you to check out some of the previous videos that I've made that go through all of that in much more detail. But essentially as a projector, one of your biggest gifts is your ability to guide. As projectors, we, and I say we because I'm also a projector if you didn't know that already, we are able to notice and see and observe some certain things that often other people can't see. And so one of the biggest ways that we can contribute to our collective is to bring these things into awareness and to help manage and guide other people's energy so that they can thrive as individuals and at the same time so that we can all thrive as a collective. Our ultimate aim and goal as projectors is to find better and more efficient ways to do things so that we can help ourselves and others to grow and evolve and thrive. So by default, the type of role that will be ideal for you as a projector is going to be one that celebrates the quality of your guidance rather than the quantity of your output. As projectors, we don't have a defined sacral. So that means that we don't have consistent access to the life force energy that the generators and manifesting generators have that gives them access to that constant flow of energy and makes them a lot more energetic and a lot better equipped to get things done on a physical level. With us not having a defined sacral, we have to be really mindful as to what we focus our energy towards. When our energy is focused, it's potent and it's super efficient and the things that we can achieve are really quite remarkable. When we try to achieve too much in quantity, we run the risk of just spreading ourselves out too thin and ultimately burning out. Being in an environment and in a role that allows you to really lean into that ability to guide and to share insights and to share wisdom over having to physically do a lot of work consistently is going to allow you to feel recognized and empowered for doing the things that come natural to you and that you're naturally good at instead of feeling discouraged and not good enough because of the things that you're simply not designed to be good at. So I know some of you are gonna want examples and although I'm always reluctant to really put things into boxes, I'm going to share some examples with you, but I just encourage you to keep in mind that just because a job role isn't in theory ideal for you, it doesn't mean that you're not able to do it or that you're not able to do it in such a way that allows you to thrive within that role. So with that said, here are some examples of roles that inherently are much more suited to the projector energy type. Roles that would come under this umbrella for me would be jobs like being a consultant, being a coach, being a therapist, being an advisor, whether that is financial advisor, a health advisor, political advisor, business advisor, management roles, leadership roles, roles that allow you to focus on being the visionary, on coming up with the direction rather than actually having to do the work to get there. So something like being a creative director where you're coming up with the concepts and the ideas and the visions 
and then you give it across to people who are brilliantly equipped and skilled at doing what it is that they do to actually bring those things to life and do the work that is required to bring those things into fruition. It could be a role in human resources where again your aim is to encourage and support other people to use their energy correctly and thrive individually so that the team and the business can thrive as a whole. It could be a role as a teacher or trainer or educator, particularly for higher education and specialised fields that don't require as much consistent daily energy as perhaps something like being a primary or secondary school teacher. Other roles could be something like research or being an analyst, where again, you're getting paid to draw out insights from data and then share those insights with others. Another role could be something like a spiritual or well-being guide, where your role is to step back, hold space and guide others. These are just some ideas or roles that I think really lend themselves to projectors. This is not a definitive list by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a good starting point to hopefully help you see the kind of roles that a projector might find more suited to their nature without feeling like they have to change themselves or push themselves or live in a constant state of exhaustion and burnout just to keep up with the work that they have to do. By comparison, what are some roles that maybe aren't ideal for a projector? These are going to be the jobs that require a consistent and a high level of energetic output. And I'm talking about physicality here, actually having to do a lot as part of your role and as part of you needing to fulfill your responsibilities. So these are things like working in hospitality, working in retail, working, for example, as a sales representative, where you're having to constantly be high energy and engaging with other people day in, day out. We're talking about things like being a doctor. And again, please don't look at these lists uh, in black and white, because for example, there's a big difference between being a doctor in the ER, working 12, 14, 16, 18 hour shift on your feet, constantly physically engaging in the work that you need to do, maybe being a surgeon or something like that, which requires a lot of physical energy and a lot of output and a lot of consistent attention and focus is very different to working as a GP or working as a specific consultant, right? You can still be a doctor, but it might just be the kind of doctor and the type of role that you go for within the medical field that might differ based on you being a projector and really leaning into, again, those insights rather than what you can physically do. Other examples might be being a chef, you know, again, long hours on your feet with a lot of physical work. It doesn't mean that if you have a passion and love for food that you can't be involved in that industry, but the way that you get involved might just look differently for you, not because you can't be a chef, but because you want to find a role that allows you to do something you're passionate about without having to sacrifice your health and well-being in the process. I hope that me sharing those examples with you doesn't leave you feeling discouraged or disappointed or disempowered in any way, shape or form, because trust me when I say you can achieve anything you truly desire, you may just need to tweak the way you achieve it to allow you to also feel good in the process. So, number one, your energy type gives you insights into the kind of role that is ideal for you as a projector. The second way that human design can help you identify your dream job and career path is by helping you identify your natural gifts, superpowers, strengths, skills, because these are going to highlight the industry that you would most likely thrive in. So as we said in step one, because your value as a projector really lies in sharing your insights, what you see, your guidance, your wisdom with others, it's so important for you to be aware of and to nurture the things that you're able to see, the things that you notice, the things that come natural to you, the things that you find easy. So often people come to me and they say, I don't know what I'm good at. I'm not good at anything. Or sometimes they say, I'm good at loads of things, but they're just like standard things that everyone's good at. I don't really have a particular passion or a particular skill or a particular talent. You guys, you all have incredible gifts, 
skills and talents. The right now you are completely undervaluing, underestimating, sometimes you're not even acknowledging them because you think everyone else can do those same things you can. That is not the case. There are so many things right now that you are really good at. I don't care if it's playing FIFA, I don't care if it's knitting, I don't care if it's drawing, I don't care if it's being an incredible parent, I don't care what it is, please don't take it for granted. Not everyone in the world is good at those things in the way that you are and no one else in the world can do those very things your way. If you currently don't know what your natural gifts, talents and skills are, if you feel like you've got nothing to bring to the table, here's what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to look at your gates and channels in your chart. The easiest way that you can do that is to get yourself a human design codex which is something that I created. And of course, this is a shameless plugin, but I'm proud to plug it in because I spent months putting it together for this very reason. This is a document that you can download straight away that is completely personalized to you. It uses your human design chart details and it draws out every single thing you need to know to understand what it is that you're good at, how you're designed to do things, how you're designed to make decisions, what your gifts are, what your superpowers are, what your challenges are and how you can overcome them. It's a super practical guide that is going to spell it out for you. So quite literally, you can go and download it and go look at your gates and channels and there it will tell you what the unique things that you bring to the table are, what your unique value is. Go and invest the £47, so it's £47 up until the 1st of September and then the price is going up, so go grab yourself a copy. But within £47 you can get the answers to all of these questions that we spend a lifetime trying to find and figure out. That's one way to do it, that's the quickest way to do it. Of course you don't have to do it that way. The ultimate goal here is for you to get a really crystal clear understanding as to what makes you unique and what makes you the cool, incredible, valuable, worthy individual that you already are. The second and third things I want you to do when it comes to this is number one, start writing a list of all the things that come easy to you. Start writing a list of all the things you enjoy doing. Start writing a list of all the things that are obvious to you. Don't be judgmental when you're writing this list and don't be dismissive. If you're a great cook, write it down. If you're great at drawing, write it down. If you like interior design, write it down. If you're incredible at finding holidays, write it down. If you're really great at driving and have an incredible sense of direction, write it down down. Start to look at this list. There is a treasure chest of value that you bring and right now you might not even be aware of it. And the third thing I want you to do is ask other people. Ask trusted people. Hey mum, what am I good at? Growing up, what did I do really well? Hey friend, hey colleague, hey manager, I would love some feedback from you. What do you feel I really bring to the team or to the table? What's the reason you see me in this role? Your partner, your wife, your husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, just ask the trusted people in your life and get feedback from them. Because as a projector, you thrive off of recognition and off of feedback. And sometimes we just need to be open to receiving that feedback to help us start to notice some of the things that are there in plain sight that we do every single day that other people notice in us but that we often, too often, undervalue and underestimate. So once you're clear as to what your gifts are, as to what your interests are, as to the things that come easy to you, once you have that list, look at it. What does it tell you? It will tell you a story. And that story will help you identify which industry or niche you are most suited for, which industry or niche you would most enjoy being in. So then the second layer slots into place. We have the kind of role that you'd be great at and then we can apply the role to a particular or a few industries. So you start to narrow it down. So maybe you would be a great consultant in the sports industry because you've always been amazing in sports and watching sports and playing sports comes easy to you and it's natural to you. Maybe you would be a great trainer in the medical industry. You love science, you love the human body, you love helping people. Maybe you would be an incredible analyst in the transport industry because you've always loved planes or trains or boats or cars. You see how you can start to merge those two things 
and one is going to give you the role that you're really made for so that you can lead into your energy without fighting against the current and one is going to put you in the right environment so that you actually have an interest and natural skills that lend themselves to you being surrounded by the people and the tasks that you actually enjoy doing. And number three, last but not least, I want you to look at your profile. What your profile is going to be able to tell you is your style of working. Different people work in different ways and your profile is one of the things that can give you insights into the way that you're best designed to fulfill that role in that industry. So let me give you an example. I'm a 2-5 in human design. So the 2-5 profile, line two is the hermit, uh, it's an actually gifted and it's, it's the kind of line that needs a lot of alone time, a lot of time to process retreat, I need a lot of space to do my own thing, recharge my batteries, practice the things that I enjoy and then the line five is the heretic. This is a line that is really there to support others, guide others, save the day. It's a line that attracts people who want to be guided and who want some support and who want some encouragement. For me, in business for example, I've been able to structure my business in such a way that allows me to be a hermit and retreat into my cave whenever I need to without my business falling apart, but also have an outlet so that I can share my message, for example, through my YouTube videos with you all, so that I can fulfill my line five needs and so that I can show up in the world and provide value to others. When I was in my corporate role, and bearing in mind at the time, I wasn't aware that I was a projector, I didn't even know what human design was, but now looking back, I was naturally trying to honor both sides to me. So I was in a management role, I was in a leadership role, which required me to be looking after a lot of people, going to a lot of meetings. And so that was a lot of line five energy, the energy of guiding, taking care of others, fixing problems, finding solutions. So whenever possible, I would find ways where I could retreat within my role. So what that would look like for me at the time was to have super strong boundaries um, with accepting meetings. So if I didn't have to be in a certain meeting, I would decline or I would block my calendar intentionally and kind of put dummy meetings in my calendar so that I would create very intentional pockets in my week where someone could invite me to a meeting and the rest of the time I was using to be in my own space and focus on, on other tasks. Towards the end of my time in that role they introduced working from home and flexi time and I was really making use of that. So knowing your profile can really educate you into how you're designed to fulfill your role and finding companies, finding roles that are going to give you the freedom and flexibility to honor those parts of you will be really important. So for example, if you're a line three, you will need freedom to experiment. You will need to be given the autonomy to try things out or you will feel trapped. If you're a line four, you will need to be in an environment that supports your need for connection, for networking, for building your tribe. If you don't have that, if you end up in a role where you're by yourself every day and there's no interaction, there's no connection, you're gonna feel like you have no impact, you're gonna feel really isolated, you're not gonna thrive. So there's so much you can learn from human design. There's so many things you can discover that already exist within you. And if only we align to these things from day one, our lives and our working lives would be so much easier. But of course, that's not always the case. That's not always possible. And sometimes what we need to do is once we become aware of these insights, is just look for ways that you can start to shift your karma reality and start to improve your future with the decisions that you're making today. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments and I will get to them as soon as I can. If you would like to buy a copy of your human design codex, then I will leave the link for you in the description box below. If you're interested in more in-depth support from me, I do offer human design readings and one-to-one -one coaching. So again, you can check out the details on my website and I'll leave the link below. If you haven't done so already and you'd like to learn more about human design, make sure you hit the subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up it makes a big difference to my small channel i hope to see you here next week bye guys